so excited to be back with you all today with the very first week of Bullet Journal 101. And before we dive in, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone for all of your positive feedback on the introduction video last week. I opened it up for questions, things that you all wanted to learn throughout the course of this series, and I've been getting lots of feedback, lots of great, great questions, and I'm really looking forward to diving into this series and answering as much as I possibly can and making this as comprehensive of, of a series as I possibly can. So thank you again, and all, all right, so let's dive into the meat and potatoes of today's video. This week's video is all about the bullet journal itself. What is a bullet journal? Why would you choose to use one? And I'm gonna do a brief overview of the different parts, what makes up a bullet journal, and how it all works together to form this amazing system. So let's dive right in. One of my favorite quotes about what the bullet journal is actually comes from the bulletjournal.com website. And if you haven't been there yet, I highly, highly recommend that you go over to bulletjournal.com, browse through the different pages, the different lessons in there, and really get to know the system. And that quote is, the bullet journal is a customizable and forgiving organization system. It can be your to-do list, sketchbook, notebook, and diary, but most likely it will be all of the above. It will teach you to do more with less. And I love that quote because it really sums up the system and it, it accentuates the, the biggest draw of the bullet journal for me, which is the fact that it's so adaptable and you can really change and adapt it to fit your own needs. Now, the bullet journal itself was created by Ryder Carroll, who's a digital designer living in Brooklyn, New York, and he created the bullet journal system about three years ago, back in 2013, and shared it with the world. And since then, it has evolved through this amazing bullet journal community that we have online. There's been so many hacks, upgrades, tweaks, people doing different things with the bullet journal system, and it's amazing to me to see how much it has evolved in these three years. Also from the bullet journal website is this quote that I adore. And that's Ryder talking about the bullet journal itself. And he sees this as an evolving, adaptable practice meant to be self-curated as you determine what works best for you. So again, there are basic guidelines to getting started and getting set up, and there is like the traditional bullet journal system that Ryder Carroll outlines at bulletjournal.com, but at the same time, what he's saying here is that it's adaptable, it's flexible. You can tweak it and change it and make it work for you. And I think that's the biggest draw of the bullet journal system itself, that you're not limited to using just one system for the rest of your life. You're welcome to change and adapt as your needs change and grow. So I love, love, love that. Another thing I wanted to touch on today is why you would wanna use a bullet journal in the first place. Why would you wanna use an analog system versus all of the digital planning apps and things like that that are out there, which don't get me wrong, they're wonderful. Technology these days absolutely amazes me, and I use a lot of digital apps myself for organizing and managing my life and my business, but I always ultimately go back to my bullet journal. And, and for me, the number one reason is there's magic that happens when you put pen to paper. There's something about that tactile feeling of putting pen to paper and writing things down that just does it for me like nothing else. Now, the act of writing itself actually helps you to remember things better. I remember back in high school, which was a long time ago for me, but back in high school, if I didn't write things down, I wouldn't remember them. And any time that I want to remember something, I make sure I write it down because otherwise it'll just be in one ear and out the other. And I know that the act of writing it down is gonna help to cement that in my brain a little bit better. Another reason I love analog over digital is that it's distraction free. We're, we're so attached to our screens all the time, our phones, our computers, our tablets, and we always have all these notifications popping up all over the place to distract us. And the thing that I love about the bullet journal or any analog system for that matter, is that I can shut all those notifications off on my electronics, put those all to the side, and I can just focus in on what I'm writing and I'm absolutely distraction free while I'm in my bullet journal. And the last reason why I really like analog over digital is the flexibility to change and adapt your system. There are so many systems out there, even with pre-printed planners and digital apps that 
you really can't change the system itself. You're kind of stuck with however it's laid out. However the designer decided to lay out that planner or that app, you're stuck with that and you can't change it. And what I love about the bullet journal is you're constantly able to tweak and change and improve it to suit your own needs at any given time. So now that we've covered what is a bullet journal and why you would want to use one in the first place, I wanted to kind of give you an overview of the system itself. The bullet journal is made up of various parts and they all work together to kind of create this organization system that really helps you to get on top of whatever's going on in your life. The language of the bullet journal is really rapid logging. And rapid logging is essentially writing things down in brief, short sentences. The way you do that within a bullet journal is you use your topics and page numbers. So at the very top of any given page, you're going to write the topic of the page itself. You're going to number that page. There's a couple of notebooks out there that come with the pages pre-numbered, which is wonderful, but depending on what you have, you may need to number your pages. When I do need to number my pages, I like to do that in advance as much as possible so that I don't forget. But you want to have your topic clearly stated at the top of the page and then the page number at the bottom. And that'll come in handy when it's time to index your pages at the front of your bullet journal, which we'll go into a little bit more. Now, rapid logging relies on bullets. And the idea with the bullets and why it's called a bullet journal is they actually help you to organize your entries within your bullet journal. So there's three main bullet types, and those are tasks, which are represented by a simple dot, there are events represented by a circle. Events are any date related entries, so events, appointments, anything related to a specific date and time. And then there's notes, and notes are represented with a dash. Um, so anything that doesn't really fall into the other two categories, anything that you're noting that you want to remember, that would be represented with a dash. And then there's signifiers, and the signifiers actually help you to kind of categorize your different tasks. So a star would mean priority, meaning that that task is more important than the others. An exclamation point is for inspiration. So anything that you really, really want to remember, something that's important to you, you would signify that with an exclamation point. And then there's an I for explore. So that's something that you need to do a little bit of research on or get a little additional information on. So those are the main signifiers that are outlined in the basic bullet journal system. Now we're gonna dive into the different modules that make up the bullet journal. And within the bullet journal, the modules all kind of work together in congruence to to help you organize and collect different specific types of entries. So the first module that you're gonna have within your bullet journal is the index. And that's gonna be the first few pages of your journal. And this is where you're gonna organize your different collections and their respective page numbers so that you can quickly find them in the future. So on the index itself, you're just gonna title that index. And then you're simply gonna write in your different topics as you enter them into your bullet journal with the page number right next to them. That way, anytime you're trying to find something within your bullet journal, you'll be able to refer back to your index, scroll through until you find your topic, and you'll be able to flip quickly to that page number. After the index comes the future log. And the future log is a collection that a lot of people have modified and adapted in a lot of different styles. And I'll definitely be covering that more in the future. But Writer actually outlines a really simple future log where you just write down six months or however many you want on a couple of pages and then you have this little section where you can write in upcoming events and tasks that need to happen on specific days in the future. After the future log comes your first monthly log and the monthly log again it's very very simple you're just going to write all of the dates of the month down the left hand side you're going to write your days of the week as well and then anything that you have that you know is coming up events or appointments wise you can go ahead and write that in and one thing i love to use the log for is just as a log of things that happen throughout the month so i love to go back in and write in just a little tidbit about what happened that day and it's great when you get to the end of the month you can read through your month log and kind of see an overview of how that month went for you and then after the monthly log comes the daily log. And the daily log is what I like to call the heart and soul of the bullet journal. The daily log is where you're gonna log all of your tasks that you have to do each day, all of your events and appointments throughout the day, and any notes that come up throughout the day as well. So the daily log 
at its most basic is very, very simple. And this is where those bullet points and signifiers are gonna come in. And that's how you categorize everything throughout the day. The great thing about the daily log is you can use as much or as little space as you need. So if you only have four or five tasks for a day, then that day is done. The next day you can start the next day right immediately under that. And you don't have to worry about wasted space like you would with a typical pre-printed planner. One big tip from the bullet journal website and one that I think is very, very important is to not set up your daily logs way ahead of time. It's great to do them as you go or the night before because you really never know how much space you're going to need on any given day or how little space. So it's really important to do those daily logs as you go so that you really maximize the space that you're taking up within your bullet journal. Now, once you have all of these different modules in place, you're going to find that at some point you're going to need to start migrating some different tasks, anything that didn't get done or that is no longer relevant and you don't need to do anymore. You're going to need a way to migrate those tasks. And the bullet journal outlines a specific way of migrating. Of course, you can tweak this and adjust it to fit your needs. And migration is definitely a very personal thing. There's people that will migrate once a month. There's people that will migrate once a week. You could migrate daily if you want to rewrite your unfinished tasks on the next day. I personally like to migrate once I turn the page. So anything that I have all on one page, I won't migrate until I turn to the next page. But migration is actually really, really simple. So if you have something that's become irrelevant and you don't need to do it anymore, you can just strike it through. If it's something that still needs your attention, you wanna migrate it. So that little dot signifier, you would turn that into a right-facing arrow, signifying that you've migrated your task, and then you add that task to your next daily page or monthly log or wherever you're migrating it to. I know for a lot of people, it seems like a lot of effort to constantly migrate unfinished tasks. You've already written it down once, you already know you need to do it, why do you need to rewrite it? But it's actually a very intentional part of the bullet journal system, and it's the actual act of having to rewrite those tasks multiple times. You start to get a sense for those things that you're constantly migrating forward, and it really makes you pause and consider each item. So when you have an unfinished task, you actually look at it and you have to think about it and decide what to do with it. Is it no longer relevant? Scratch it out. Is it something that I do need to take care of? Migrate it forward. Maybe put one of those star signifiers next to it, noting that it's something very important that actually needs to get done. So migration definitely has a purpose here and it's really to help you determine what's worth the effort and look at those tasks and really think, is this still something that I need to tackle? If not, cross it out. If it is, then absolutely migrate it forward, rewrite it, and the act of rewriting it really helps to cement that in your brain. So that is the basic breakdown of the bullet journal system, y'all. And you'll notice there's a lot of things that I didn't cover here today. Things like a Calendex, things like weekly spreads. Um, these are all adaptations and things that have evolved within the bullet journal system. But what I've broken down here today for you are the absolute basics. And I'm gonna go into all of these in a lot more detail in our future videos. But I just wanted to give you a brief overview so that you have an idea of how everything kind of works together. And I'm really, really excited about next week's video. Next week, we're gonna talk about pre-planning and brainstorming how you want your bullet journal to work for you, what things you're gonna need or not need within your bullet journal. And we're also gonna talk about supplies, which is always a fun conversation to have. So I really, really look forward to seeing you all again next week. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you're curious about that you want me to include within this series, please, please, please drop those down below in the comments. Again, I'm compiling all of those and I'm really trying to make this the most comprehensive course for you all. So thanks again for being here with me today and I will look forward to seeing you all on Friday. Bye.